A planted aquarium is a great addition to your home or aquarium collection. But if you're new to the hobby, it can seem like quite the undertaking to get a planted tank set up and running smoothly. Let's walk through step by step how to properly set up a simple planted tank and prepare it for aquarium fish. The first item on the list is, of course, the tank itself. I chose a 10 gallon aquarium to keep it simple and because I want to add a small community of fish down the road. The tank will live in a well lit corner of the house where it can be easily seen. Location is important when setting up a new aquarium. Place it somewhere you will enjoy it and preferably close to a water source for hassle free water changes. Once you are happy with the location of the aquarium, it's time to get started with the setup. Adding substrate is the first step. For a planted aquarium, active flora is a great choice. It contains both minerals for the plants to grow strong and healthy, but also beneficial bacteria which will help boost the nitrogen cycling of this tank. This will be helpful when it comes time to add fish, since we want the aquarium to be cycled in order to handle fish waste. The black color of this substrate will make the plants really stand out. This bag says it contains 16 pounds of active flora. To create a slight sense of depth in the aquarium, you can use a tool or your hands to angle the substrate up toward the back of the tank, keeping it more shallow in the front. Creating a slope like this makes it a bit more eye-catching versus smoothing the substrate flat or pushing it to the front of the tank. The next step in the process will be adding some stones as natural decor. Planning ahead is helpful if you know what type of tank you'd like to create. For this aquarium, I thought it might be interesting to create an island, and I chose my materials with that in mind. Varying sizes of rocks will create a more natural look. When all the stones are the same size, it can start to look too uniform and intentional. I like to use a large rock as a starting point and smaller to medium sized rocks to complement it. The key to an eye catching planted tank that will wow your friends and family is in this step. Take some time to place the rocks carefully in a way that is appealing to you. It may take a couple tries. Turn the stones around and try from a different angle. To keep it simple, only one type of stone is being used and we don't even need to add any driftwood. Now that all the rocks have been placed, it's time to get started with some plants. A variety of plants can help make the aquarium look more natural. A total of six plant species will be used for this 10 gallon tank. Plants of different shapes and sizes mix well together and can be used in different parts of the aquarium. I chose large plants for the back of the tank and smaller, shorter plants for the front. An Amazon sword and red flame sword will go on either side of the island in the back, and Vallisneria in the back middle. These are the tallest plants. For the middle part of the aquarium where the rocks live, Java Fern Windelov will add some beautiful texture and live attached to the rock itself. And finally, in front of the island will go this low maintenance Cryptocorini lutea as well as some of this micro sword, which has a grass-like texture. The large swords will be planted as is, but the other plants can be broken down into multiple smaller plants. I simply split the Cryptocorini lutea with my fingers, keeping the roots intact, and made about five or six smaller plants. The micro sword was a bit more tricky because this plant sends out baby plants as runners in a chain, but I bunched a few together to create smaller little clumps for planting. This does create more work preparing these, but it's a good way to cover more of the tank without having to buy a ton of plants.
Aquarium plants don't like to be dried out for too long, so I use a spray bottle to keep them misted while I'm working. Tools can also be very helpful when working with plants, specifically tweezers for planting into the substrate and scissors for trimming plants as needed. To begin the planting process, we'll start in the back with the largest plants. The Amazon sword and the red flame sword go in first. And then a few Vallisneria plants in the middle. The java fern windalaw will simply get wedged between these rocks on either side of the island. The roots will eventually take hold and anchor it in place. In general, java fern prefers to be attached to the decor rather than buried in the substrate. The last two plants are the smallest and will go up front and around the island. Carefully with a pair of tweezers, wedge the roots into the substrate. The idea is to make these plants look like they popped up naturally around the rocks. Finally, the plants are in and everything looks great together. Using a long and carefully placed hose, we'll now fill up the tank, making sure not to disturb the substrate. That way the water will stay nice and clear after filling. Next, some equipment will need to be added to keep this planted aquarium running smoothly. An LED light that is designed for planted tanks is ideal. We'll be using the Aquarium Co-op Easy Plant LED for this tank. The 20 fits perfectly on a 10 gallon aquarium. For filtration, a sponge filter will keep the water circulated and oxygenated and won't require a ton of maintenance. An air stone inside will create small bubbles and keep the flow gentle. I just cut a small piece of airline tubing to connect the air stone to the sponge filter. Then connect the other end to an air pump and we're good to go. This air pump from Aquarium Co-op is battery operated and will even keep this tank running if the power goes out. We'll go ahead and add some Fritzzyme 7 which contains live beneficial bacteria to help further boost the cycling of this tank. This step is optional, but can help speed up the growth of the nitrifying bacteria, which are essential for adding fish. The tank is looking good so far, and all of the equipment is working perfectly. In an effort to lower the chance of algae overgrowth, the lights will be on a schedule, and will be switched on about 6 hours per day on a lower to medium light setting. The last step here is to just wait. This tank will need a chance to go through the nitrogen cycle so that fish can safely be added. Testing the water will tell us when the tank has completed cycling. In the meantime, we can think about which fish would be happy in this tank and complement the plants nicely. Would live bearers work well? Which fish would you put in this aquarium? Leave a comment and let us know. We hope you enjoyed this video. We picked another one that we thought you might enjoy as well. You can click on it right here.